Hello friends, welcome back to the Hey Mom, Hey Dad YouTube channel. The channel where uh, you get to see a little bit of my life, my wife's life, our children's life. We're the Skelly family. I'm Kerrigan. This is Angela, my wife. Hi. And um, in searching and thinking about uh, what our next video would be on, uh, people, some people suggested telling our story, how we met. And I've talked about this in bits and pieces and different uh, Bible teaching videos I have where I'm teaching in front of the, uh, the fellowship of the church I'm a pastor at. But never where I sit down with my wife and we can talk about it together. And I know she hasn't been in many videos uh, so far on Hey Mom, Hey Dad YouTube channel, but it's going to start increasing in the uh, next weeks and months. I'm doing other videos like um, doing videos on short children's chores and doing videos on um, cooking and running the house, those kind of things, homeschooling. I know lots of women have different questions about those things and want to hear from a woman's perspective instead of right. my perspective. So I guess I'll start out um, back in 2000. Uh, this was back in like April of 2000. I was living in Maryland with my parents and the Lord was calling me to move to Illinois to go to a university called Olivet Nazarene University. And I was just being obedient to God. I didn't really know anybody there. There was one person who had shown me around the campus who I knew there. And she got me in contact with one guy who she knew who was just looking for a roommate. Had never met the guy before. Uh, hadn't even talked to him over the phone. So I was really going there by faith. This is before social media, before smartphones really. I had a cell phone, but it wasn't a smartphone. Um, and so I was really walking by faith. I knew God had called me to go there. And so that's why I went there. I wasn't going there to find a wife. I was just going there to be obedient to God. And so that was April 2000. Now around June that year, um, I had come to conclusions about dating um, that I had never come to before. I wasn't raised in a Christian family. And at that point in time, I was about three years in the faith. Hadn't been taught these things. But someone gave me a book called When God Writes Your Love Story. And one thing I just desired above all, I just wanted to know what God's will was for me in that area. If, if God wanted to be married, I want to be married and to the right person. If God wanted me to be a eunuch for the rest of my life and never be married, I was willing to do that as well, although I did have desires to be married. And so June of that year, 2000, I really submitted my life to God in that area and said, I'm not dating anybody anymore. I'm not seeing anyone anymore. I'm not going to search after anybody. I'm not going to flirt. I'm not going to look into it. And if thoughts like that come to my mind, I'm going to rebuke them and just give them to Jesus. And really just focus on doing what Matthew 6.33 says, which is seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all the things you need be given unto you by God. That was my focus completely. And so I started college that fall semester in 2000. And pretty quickly I realized that um, there was lots of unholiness on the campus. This is the campus of Nazarene College. And the Nazarene denomination as a whole over the years, for the most part, has been focused on holiness. I don't know where it's at now. You have to take it church by church, but that's been the start of the denomination until now. It's always been a focus on holiness. So um, when I saw those things, it really surprised me. It wasn't what I was expecting at a college campus. It was a Nazarene university. And so I began to pray and seek God. And I began to lead prayer meetings on the campus at this little chapel called Kelly Prayer Chapel. And it began to grow slowly over time during the fall semester. At the same time, God had convicted me through a sermon by a man named David Ring, a man who has cerebral palsy, who came to the, the church I was a part of, which was Kent Key First Church of Nazarene. I was a part of that church and he came and preached about you know, doing ministry. And I had done a little bit here and there but God really began to speak to me about working with the youth. And I really wanted to do that. Uh, at that point in time, I was only about 21 years old, 22 years old myself, but I really wanted to do something. And so I started working with the youth group of the church as Kent Key First Church of Nazarene. <clears throat> began to work primarily with the seventh and eighth grade boys, but I was working with anyone and everyone. And the youth, pa youth pastor at a point in time, his name was Rick Harmon, and he was really solid. And so was his wife, Nancy. Just really solid believers. I really looked up to them in the faith. They loved to worship God, to pray, to uh, get into the Word, dig into the Word, and just really lead 
the youth to be sold out disciples of Jesus. And uh, so it was during that fall semester, I was just, you know, once, like I said, I wasn't seeking after a woman or anything like that, just praying, getting involved in youth ministry, and also leading those prayer meetings and going to school. And I was working full time at the same time uh, for ADT alarm systems. And it was during that time, it was around November sometime that year. Um, like I said, I wasn't seeking after anyone. I went to a, the bowling alley because Olivet had blocked off one night for their students to go to the bowling alley. And um, this lady we both knew introduced me to her. And when I saw her, I'm not going to say it's love at first sight, uh, that kind of stuff. But, and it wasn't that she, she was beautiful, obviously physically, I, th I thought she was, but it wasn't that either. It was something different, something happened within me. And I kind of gave her that look that dogs give when you make a funny sound. I was like, huh. Uh -huh. I was like, and she, 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 I don't know what my face looked like, but that's what I, I remember that I thought something. And when I got home that night, I just rebuked it and just prayed and prayed and prayed. And so I, I think I'll, I'll stop right there and let you go from like around that same time period where I started up to this, that point as well. Okay. So yeah, at the bowling alley, we were there and it was actually my roommate. I don't know how she knew him, but she did. And she decided I want you to meet somebody. And so she introduced us and as soon as she, as soon as he looked at me, he just went, huh. I was like, oh, that was weird, but whatever. I didn't know what to think of it. But from there, I mean, that was, that's that was November. The first, yeah, but that's the first time he remembers meeting. I remember meeting at a Sunday school um, picnic a couple months before that, but he doesn't remember that. But you can't forget the name Kerrigan Skelly, so I remembered it. And, um, I think so I, I think at that picnic, I think me and my roommate were like tossing a football back and yeah, forth. Yeah, you guys were. So I was kind of just... And his roommate was my that. Sunday school teacher. So I think his roommate introduced us then, and he wasn't really paying attention. And then when my roommate introduced us at the bowling alley, he made that face, and it was just funny. But Yeah. And at, at that point, around that same time, I don't have all the exact dates right, but around that same time from November around the end of November, she began to come to the, the prayer meetings as well. Yeah. And just to backtrack a little bit before that, there was this lady in my my classes who was really kind of peculiar. I want to say peculiar. Is that probably very, the right word for her? Very, yeah. She's from Australia. She had fiery red, curly, long hair, mm -hmm. and really a peculiar character. Uh, her name was Tony, And she was in my classes, and immediately I, I, I was... I, I had a friendship with her because she was very spiritually minded mm -hmm. and we were very like minded in that way. In fact, um, later on in the next semester in spring, she was in the middle of a 40 day fast and she had done that several times in her life. And I have contact, we had kind of with her every once in a while, yeah, like maybe still, once yeah. every two or three years, we will say something to her, I think through messenger and Facebook, but. But the funny thing about that is, yeah. is after I met him, we had, we had started seeing each other throughout the campus. I was going to the prayer meetings and he comes to me one day and he goes, just said, I met this girl. She's in one of my classes. She has, she's from Australia and she has fiery red hair. And I was like, what? Tony Smith? And he's like, why do you know her? And I said, yeah, she was one of my uh, leaders at a teen camp years ago, like five years ago. And so that was, I was just like, and I didn't know she was there. So that was just really interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting, and, she, and she's going to be a connection in our process as we talk about yeah. this, that my wife, like she said, met her five years before that in northern Michigan at a Nazarene teen camp. Right. And she had some interaction with Tony, and Tony had prayed over her and said some things to her yeah. and her brother as well. And then she was back to Australia eventually. I'm not sure how long she was in America at that yeah. point in time. I hadn't seen her or talked to her since that <clears throat> teen camp. And then she came back to Australia, back from Australia to America at Olivet, where she was, where I was, that fall semester of 2000, and that's when I met her. And she was, she was a very, she was a godly woman, and she immediately became like a counselor. I remember she would tell me stories of how she'd be praying through the night in her dorm room, and girls would come to her door and knock on her door and ask for counsel and repent to her, mm -hmm. repent and be broken over their sins. And she, God was just really using her in mighty ways on that college campus. 
And so eventually, um, it was, was it the end of that semester, or beginning of that semester, you started working with youth? I think, because I had gone home for Christmas break, so I think it was when I came back. Okay, so we had some interaction through the, through the prayer meetings and group get-togethers after the prayer meetings. And then one time, um, my roommate invited her and her roommate over to our house for dinner and for like board games or something like that. Was yeah. that before the uh, Christmas break? That was, pretty, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was before Christmas yeah, break. I can't remember. Uh, and that, so we interacted with that, but at the same time, I was, I was starting to have, um, you wanna say feelings for her, these thoughts in my mind about her possibly being the one for me to marry, and I was constantly rebuking them. I, I didn't want to go through that. I had been through it before up to that point. Like I said I was about three and a half years in the faith at that point, at the end of 2000. I, I didn't um, want to go down that path again without knowing for sure it was God's will. Yeah, and I had done the same thing. Like, <clears throat> I don't remember the exact time frame, but when I had met him, I had made the same commitment to the Lord. I had dated, I had even been engaged before, and I wasn't taught courting and not to date and all of that, which we don't do now, but even, you know, we teach our children not to do that. But I had made the same decision that I was not going to date again. I was just fasting and praying and waiting for the Lord. And so we had both kind of done that around the same time. That's right. So God was kind of like converging our paths together, mm -hmm. right? We we're on the same path and many different things in many different ways. So she went away for Christmas break. And what did you tell your mom on Christmas break? I talk, went home and told my mom that I had thought that I had met the man I was going to marry. And she just, I think she just started praying for me. But yeah, at that point, I think I knew. And so she, she was raised in a Christian household, uh, even though she wasn't taught necessarily everything right when it comes to dating and courtship. Uh, she had praying parents who loved her and you know taught her God's word. And uh, it's, no, it's no slight against them to say that she didn't teach her courting. It wasn't a normal thing. It wasn't yeah. like a, a well-known thing. And what we mean by dating is like trying to figure it out yourself, going out with someone, hugging, kissing, touching, and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, them taking a part of you with them as you break up. You take a part of them with, with you. And it's just, it's not the way God meant for it to be. And so whether you call it dating and courting, that's not the important thing. The important thing is you follow biblical principles when it comes to relationship, especially who you're going to marry in the end. So we come back from Christmas break. I know throughout Christmas break, I kind of missed her. I mean, like I said, we were not courting, we were not dating, I was rebuking feelings, but I had a friendship with her and I cared about her and I liked the quality that I saw in her. And just to backtrack again a little bit, as soon as I stopped dating in June of that year, 2000, I said, well, I'm just gonna start praying. I'm gonna pray for the exact qualities, characteristics I want to have in my wife, even down to what she looked like. And when she came along, she was like fulfilling all those characteristics I was praying for, all those qualities I was praying for. But like I said, I wanted to make sure I want—I didn't, I didn't have any doubts in my mind. So we came back from Christmas break. Um, I think at that point in time, the prayer meetings were over with. There had been some issues in December before Christmas break, so that had ended. But she started working with the youth. Yeah. Now, the two people like I was talking about earlier, Rick and Nancy, who were the Rick is the youth pastor, and Nancy is his wife, who would help him with a lot with a lot of different things, especially with the girls and the youth group. Um, I was working with them for about six months at that point, and just really became like the pastor of the middle school boys. And these boys were sold out. I mean, they were worshiping God probably like no one else in that church. And that church, I think, had 1,200 members, something like that, yeah, with a choir of about 100 people, and a youth group had about 100 people. And so they were really were sold out. It's about ten to twelve of them, really doing good. I was really connecting with them. I'd have them sleep over, and we'd have Bible study and play games together and stay up all night. And so God was really working through me in their lives. And then she came along, and at, at first Nancy and Rick weren't sure about you. Yeah. Um, they might. They thought that maybe you were coming to help out with the YouTube because I was there. Because I liked you or something. Yeah. Because but they, she didn't. She didn't say it to anyone. Yeah. And. and she wasn't thinking like that, you know, outwardly. Um, but they, they soon found out that was not the case. Yeah. And she really loves the youth, always has. In fact, before I met her, she had done, what was an internship in Indianapolis? Inner city missions, yeah. Inner for, city missions. For kids. Yeah, yeah I for, did that for a whole summer. 
probably troubled youth. Troubled youth in the inner city of Indianapolis. Yep. So she was, she loved working with youth and those girls in the youth group, they needed someone to speak to them who was closer to their age. And so Angela was only like 19 at that point in time. And so God was using her in that way. And as time went by, weeks and months went by, they began to see that she really loved those girls and they knew it too. And that she wasn't there for me. But in the midst of her walk working with the girls and me working with the boys, primarily middle school, but I worked with the other boys as well. Um, but the middle school is my primary focus. They began to see something. And so um, and throughout all this process, um, like I said, I'm rebuking these thoughts, but me and Angela are seeing each other more often. In fact, after Christmas break, there wasn't a day that went by that we didn't see each other at some point. Right. Whether yeah. it's at school, at a restaurant, um, at the college campus for other events, at the at the youth ministry. Yeah. We were constantly seeing each other, talking course, to each other. We went to the same church. So. Went to the same church, but we were just friends. Mm -hmm. There was nothing romantic going on. We weren't holding hands, hugging, kissing, that kind of stuff. And so it came to a point in February, this is about three months into us knowing each other, um, that I just, I couldn't deal with these, you want to call them feelings, but I think it was from the Lord, of how I was feeling towards her. Yeah. And so I did what any believer should do if they want to make sure about a decision. I sought the Lord and then I sought godly counsel. And so the first person that came to mind was Tony. Mm -hmm. Because at that point in time, like I said earlier, she was in the middle of a 40 day fast. Mm -hmm. And I said, she's really gotta be hearing from God. And I've done fasting my form myself before many times in my, my life, extended ones, short ones. And you really hear God very carefully when you're in the middle of fasting and praying. And we were both fasting and praying during that time too. Yeah. We had both gone into like a three or four day fast. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And I've talked about many times in different videos, the things that happened to me during a four day fast during that period of time. But I was fasting and praying obviously myself, but I still didn't want to deceive myself. And so I sought God to counsel someone who's objective. Um, he would tell me the truth that I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear, mm -hmm. but what I needed to hear. And so I, I try to get a hold of Tony and I guess actually the prayer meetings were going on after the break because this is the part of that. And she, there must have been going on. It must have been going on like January, yeah, and February right. too. Yeah. I so I guess they, they were going on longer than I thought they were. Yeah, originally. a couple months maybe. After so that. January, February, they were going on in February. It was getting towards the end of those prayer meetings. And Tony was coming to them. But because she lived on campus, she had a curfew. She had to be back by a certain time. And she came late one night to the prayer meeting and then left early to go back because she had to be in for curfew. I lived off campus. I didn't have a curfew. But I had left her a message earlier that day at telling her I wanted to get her counsel. I wanted to get her advice on a certain issue. Didn't tell her what it was about. And so the next day at class, after she went back early for cur because of curfew, I asked her, I said, well, Tony, did you get my message? She said, well, yeah, I did. Did you get my message? I said, no, I didn't get any message. Remember, this is not this is back before text messaging and messenger. And I mean, there was email too, but we weren't really using it a ton right. at that point in time. At least I wasn't, either was she. And so I had left her a voicemail message. And she had left me a message on a napkin and put it in my Bible that night at prayer meeting before she left. And what she said on a napkin is she says, I believe you and Angela are meant to be together. And when I, at that day in class, I said, you left the message in my Bible. I got my Bible out, opened a napkin. I was like, wow, that's like what I was going <laughs> to ask her about. Right. How, how in the world did she know? Well, she didn't know. God knew. Right. And God told her what to, the message to give to me. But the funny thing is you still have that napkin. Yeah, it's somewhere at home. <laughs> I don't know exactly where it is at this point in time, but it's somewhere at home. I yeah. still have that napkin somewhere. Um, and then that, that still wasn't enough for me. I mean, I, that, it's just like I was Gideon at this point in time. It probably should have been enough. But it, it really, it really wasn't, and so I just wanted to make sure. So I went to Tony, uh, Tony. I went to to Rick and Nancy, and we, I think we went to them together. Did we go to yeah, them? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we we had been in fellowship with them many late nights after youth group. They would just take us out to eat and just sit with us and talk to us. They had been really, really counseling us. Not in not in marriage. We hadn't really talked about that. They were just just pouring themselves into us. I mean, it was really a blessing. I mean, yeah. just by, I think it was about 10 months I was around them in that manner, in that capacity. It was just great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I have contact with them here and there throughout the years since then. 
few and far between though, but um, really poured into us and it was really a blessing. I remember a lot of things they taught us during that time. Yeah. So I remember them to this day. And so uh, thank you, Rick and Nancy, if you're watching. Yeah. We appreciate it. But they obviously were noticing something too. They hadn't said a word to us about it that I remember anyway. Right. Um, and so before we went to them though, just to step back a little bit, you and I had sat down and I, I had, cause I, I was noticing, like I said, everything I was praying for, I was seeing in her. And I already talked to Tony and then I was talking to her and I, we, had, we had, both were keeping spiritual journals at that point yeah. in time. And in those journals, we were talking about what we believe God was calling us to right. in life. And it was matching up perfectly. Right. And I was like, we sat down and talked about, well, what do you think? Well, you sat down and you said, I have something to show you. Okay. And you pull out the napkin. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. pull the napkin out of your Bible. And I was like, what is that? And then you told me the whole thing about Tony. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Right. And so then I I brought out my journal. She brought out her journal. And it was like matching up perfectly. Yeah. And I was like, well, we need to make sure. So we went and talked to Nick and Rand uh, Nick and Rand Rick and Nancy, right. not Nick and Rancy, <laughs> Rick and Nancy, and um, they they were smiling. They were both in the meeting, and they both believed that we were meant to be together, too. Right. And so these the three most spiritually minded, close to God people we knew of at that point in time, all agreed that we were meant to be together. Yeah. And so now there was only one step left, which was to go to your parents. Right. But I was nervous. I was nervous about that. <laughs> they had never met me. They didn't know me. Like I said, they were Christians. Her dad was a pastor at that point in time. Uh, her mother is, loves praying to God, praying all the time. And so we went to them and and met them one weekend. Right. And by the end of the weekend, we came. They said, "Well, go back home to." Because shoot, they're up in northern Michigan area. They said, "Go back home and prepare for marriage." Yeah. Get premarital counseling. Mm-hmm. Yep. After knowing me for one weekend. Right. So. That's something right there. Yep. So we had so we had the confirmation just from God our, himself, our our ministries that we, we thought about moving forward, matching up. The ministry we we're doing then, matching up. The people who were the most spiritual in our life saying yes, yep. even knowing about it before we did. Right. Her parents saying yes to it. I mean, it just all came together. Right. So that's like February of 2001. And two months later, we got married. Right. And I'll tell you, man, you better make sure you you know you're marrying the person you're supposed to marry because there's things we've been through in life that if I'd have married someone else, I'd been messed up, man. Right. Wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Yeah. You know, my wife's been so supportive over the years. And then um, there's more things that match up than what I'm saying here, like how many children we wanted to have, right. how we wanted to raise children. You know, how we wanted to live our lives, the roles we have in marriage, husband and wife, mother and father, all those things matched up the way they're supposed to. Yeah. And so that was uh, 22, almost 22 and a half years ago now. Yeah. And God has really blessed our marriage, our life, and both of us were engaged to someone else at some point in time before right. we met each other. Mm -hmm. What a disaster that would have been. Oh, man. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> if I would have married her or you would have married him oh. or anyone else I was in a relationship before I met you. And so we don't we don't want to play our games with our with our life because, you know, if things go right, you should be married to the person, the only person you're ever married to. If things go right, that's what it should be. And so this is the person you've been with the rest of your life, your, your partner, the love of your life, your best friend. And I can truly say this one right here is my best friend. Mm -hmm. She really is. There's no one who knows me like her. There's no one who loves me like her. There's no one I love like her. No one I know like her. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future with, with much encouragement because of what I've seen in the past. We've been through ups and downs together, hills, valleys, I mean, mountains, the fire, you know, good times, bad times, difficulties, easy times. Yeah. And God's been good to us through the whole thing. Yeah, and I can say the same about you. I mean, all of those things. You're my best friend and just so thankful for how he's led me and led our family. And I don't know where I would be without him leading me and guiding me as a godly husband. So I'm just so thankful that the Lord brought us together and we waited for the right person. We finally gave up the dating game and just sought the Lord. And I think that's the most important thing, just 
waiting on the Lord and seeking the Lord. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I, I, I tell people this who I give premarital counseling to. I've done this for many, many couples. You better make sure you have some kind of assurance. This is it. You, you better have, make sure you have that that God moment or that God assurance that this is the per person you're supposed to be with. Because no matter what happens in the future, you have that to look back to, that to hold on to. Right. God led me to this person. God yeah. led this person to me. So no matter what we go through, I can deal with it because God has led me to this person mm -hmm. and this person to me. Yeah. So this is a part of our story. Yeah. I'm so thankful to God that he has given me my wife. And I can truly say he, she's from him. And I'm, I'm looking forward to what's in the future for us. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, be able to tell you, you know, 22 and a half years ago, almost now, I wouldn't have been able to tell you this is where my life would be at that point in time. I wouldn't be able to tell you I would be a street preacher, be a father of eight, you know, be living in Georgia. I wouldn't be able to tell you those things. But God knew. And since he's the one who knows the future and holds the future, we have to trust in him in these issues. Yeah. So important. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Anything else you want to share? I can just say, I remember, I was just thinking about this when um, I was getting ready for the wedding day and just having this overwhelming peace that surpasses anything else. Like, I just knew that this was what God wanted without a doubt. There was no nerves, nothing. I was just mm -hmm. so excited. Couldn't wait to, to meet him at the altar. And that peace was like nothing, nothing ever before you know same with me no yeah. cold feet no doubts no nervousness i really wanted to just get there with me be with you right and i don't even mean like an intimate way like that physically intimate way. i'm talking about just be with you right and start our life together right i was so excited so many people uh get to their wedding day and just nervous cold feet doubts mm -hmm. listen if that's you man there's probably something wrong right it's probably something wrong it's an important decision so i understand why people have cold feet and get nervous sometimes but that's only happening if you don't have the assurance of God. So God wants you to have that assurance. But you only have it if you seek Him, you pray, you fast, you seek godly counsel, you get confirmations in all these areas, and then you'll have the assurance, the peace, mm -hmm. that passes understanding. Right. Well, amen. God bless you guys. Hopefully this is a blessing to you, an encouragement to you. If you have questions, ask them down below. Don't forget to like, to comment, to subscribe, to share, to hit that little bell. This has been a blessing to you. Share with others. And as far as the question, we should have them answer ask, answer in the in the comment section. How about this? What video would you like to see my wife be oh, in no. next? <laughs> what thing would you like to see her do next? So just put that, drop that comment down in there. And of course, if you have questions, like I said, please ask them. We'll, we'll answer them to the best of our ability. If you have a question you want me to answer, say, hey, dad, and the question. If you have a question you want her to answer, say, hey, mom, and then give the question. That way I'll know who you want to address it to. If you just want to ask the question in general, just ask the question and we'll get to it as soon as we can. God bless you guys. Look forward to the next video. Bye for now. Bye.